Hi, welcome to this video session. Today I will talk about a small and interesting problem regarding one-time pad algorithm. So let's get straight into the problem now. Alice and Bob are using one-time pad algorithm. Let me quickly recap what one-time pad algorithm is for the benefit of the audience who are not familiar with it. It's really simple. You have two functions, um, encryption and decryption, right? How do we define encryption? We need two inputs. One is the message, another is the key, okay? Usually we write key first, so let me follow the convention. Is XR of, like here, this is XR, okay? Denotes XR. I'll define what XR is. If, uh, if you are not familiar with it, you, you will be able to follow that quickly. So decryption requires also the same key and the ciphertext, then we do the XR of these two. So we usually call this the ciphertext C, right? And then we decrypt it. So what is this XR now? Let me explain what XR is. XR is um, a function that takes two arguments. So you can quickly define it like this. Okay, this is the XR definition. All right. Um, I will clean this because this is very basic. People are familiar with it. Um, let me clear this first. Okay, so this is the one-time pad algorithm that we are talking about in this in this problem. Okay, um, let us assume that both Alex and Bob already shared the symmetric key. Uh, the, the symmetric key K is already shared up front. We don't have to go into the detail of how did they share the key, but let's assume they share the key already. And they're not using the same key for multiple messages, encrypting multiple messages. Okay. Um, now comes the interesting part of the problem. Alice sent an encrypted message to Bob. So Alice and Bob are talking over an encrypted channel. Um, something like this is happening. Now Alice is here, uh, Bob is here. Alice is sending some message to Bob uh, over an encrypted channel. Eve is over here. She is our evil character. She listens to the traffic exchange between Alice and Bob. All right, so what is Eve intercepting now? Eve is intercepting a piece of ciphertext called EQ, um, EQNBZ of length five. So Eve is intercepting this little piece of information. What is the question now? The question is asking us to select all that apply. All letters of the plain text are different. Hmm. We are seeing the ciphertext letters now. It's EQNVZ. Can we conclude that all the letters of the plain text are different? We, we can't conclude anything that um, all letters of the plain text are different. Let me explain why. The reason we can't conclude is that individual bits of um, the ciphertext are not related in one time pad algorithm. All we have is a simple XOR between two um, bits, right? That's what uh, this XOR operation is. XOR is defined at a bit level. And um, if you intercept a piece of ciphertext uh, and they're all different, you can't conclude anything about the plain text. They, they can be same, they can be different, we don't know anything. Um, because the, the, as, as you can see here, the, the operations are defined using XR. XR itself is a um, bit level operator. It doesn't uh, compare one bit with other, other bit um, within the plain text. So it's, it's basically comparing each bit of the key with the corresponding bit of the plain text, okay. All right, so maybe it's much easier if I simplify this problem further down. And, and, and talk about it um, even more simpler than EQ and BZ. Let's take this simple problem first. Let's, let's see, um, if, what if the ciphertext is a bit zero, okay? Bit zero. Can Eve do anything now? Can Eve do anything about this? Maybe simpler problem, okay? Eve intercepts bit zero, right? She can't say anything about the plain text because the plain text could have been simply like this. The plain text could have been either zero, and the key could have been zero, or plain text could have been one, and key could have been one. So just seeing a piece of ciphertext doesn't tell anything about the plain text. You know, if the if the bit is uh, if the ciphertext bit is say one, we could also argue that the plain text could have been one, key could have been zero, or plain text could have been zero and key could have been one. So Brute forcing essentially won't help you. We, what we did now is actually brute force all possible keys. It didn't tell us anything because the plain text could have been anything. Okay, now we can get back to the original problem. 
Okay. If you can reverse the correct plain text by brute forcing all possible five by five byte keys, uh, we may think five byte keys are much smaller, only 40, 40 bits, right? Five byte means 40 bits. And we could just try all possible 40 bits, and then we will find out the plain text. No, absolutely not. This is not going to work, as we just discussed now. Um, given a piece of ciphertext, we can always construct whatever plain text we like. All we can choose is just do the uh, XR. All we can do is just do the XR to find a, a matching key that you would like to have. So, so there is no reason to believe that by brute forcing all possible um, five byte keys, we will be able to derive the plain text. Let me explain this with an example. Say, um, say for example, um, we take this cipher text, right? E, Q, N, V, Z. Let's go to the XR calculator here. I can uh, now um, clear my, okay, one moment. So let's consider this now. Um, I'm inside GDB, and I would like to show you how the uh, plain text can be constructed, and the key can be constructed to just match the given ciphertext. So what was the ciphertext we got? We got the ciphertext EQ and VZ. So in hex, it is nothing but 45, 51, 4E, 56, 5A. Suppose we brute force, uh, all possible keys. I mean, um, you can construct any plain text you like to have. Say, let's say I, I, I say the plain text was happy. Okay. Now I can construct a key. The key could have been just XR of XR of this corresponding to this. This is this is going to give us the first byte of key. XR of this and this will give you give us the second byte of key. So we have constructed a key, and that key, when, when we apply XR to EQ, NVZ, it will give us happy as the plain text, okay? So we cannot say happy is the only plain text because, let me show you now, we can construct another, any other five letter keyword. For example, house. House is also another five letter keyword, right? This could have been a plain text. This could have been plain text, not a keyword. This is a, this could have been a plain text, and all we need to do is now XOR this byte with this byte to get the first byte of the key, this byte and this byte to get the second byte of the key. So we can always generate any plain text we would like and any key we would like to match the given ciphertext, as long as we follow the rules of the encryption and decryption function. But that, that's basically just an XR function anyways. So um, the point is that by just brute forcing all possible five byte keys, you're not going anywhere. You cannot conclude what could have been the five byte letter that was sent by um, Alice to Bob. It, it could be any, any five letter a word and you have no idea. Of course, um, even if you have some kind of a context, you still can um, get all possible file letter words from that um, brute forcing uh, your keys, and you cannot you cannot still point to the letter that you would like to. Uh, you cannot still point to the plain text that you would like to see um, or infer with hundred percent confidence. Okay, all right. So this this means that um, we cannot we cannot say brute forcing the the key space will will. Uh, um, um, show all possible five byte keys. That's why we didn't select this as an answer. On the other hand, um, as I have just demonstrated, brute forcing the key space will very likely produce false positives. Um, very simple example I, I, I was showing you uh, was just to use a simple key space and a message space. Let's can take a simple message space made of just two bits, zero or one, and the key space made of zero or one, right? And the cyberspace, of course, can only be zero or one in this case, because we're just doing XR. Now, given um, one particular si um, bit of a cyberspace, let's call it a zero, you cannot say what is the, what is M? What is the message M? You cannot say that. 
M could have been zero, T could have been zero. M could have been uh, one, T could have been one. So uh, it's impossible to, to, to tell the answer for this problem, essentially. Okay, so brute forcing the key space will very likely produce false positives. In fact, all of them uh, could be a candidate plain text, therefore it's impossible, okay? The last question, the last part of the answer is that if Eve tampers the cipher text, Bob will not be able to detect the tampering on his own. That's true. Um, the reason is that, say, um, Alice was sending the cipher text C to be zero, okay? But the Eve modified the cipher text. Eve changed the cipher text to one. Okay, what will happen now? Um, Bob will uh, just take the cipher text, right? And XOR it with his key. But, but this cipher text, maybe I should call this as uh, C1 or uh, C Eve. <laughs> okay, C Eve was the one that Eve sent. When Bob decrypts this, He's going to take this, right? This will be the Bob's decryption. Okay. Why would this not work? Well, it will work. He will get something. What he will get some is different from what um, Alice has actually sent. In fact, we can calculate this must be nothing but just the flip of the original message, right? Because he has flipped the uh, message. That means it must be same as M um, XR with one. If if uh, Alice was sending one, Bob would be getting zero. If Alice was sending uh, zero, Bob would be getting one, and and, and vice versa. Okay, uh, right. So this is basically it. Um, this particular uh, problem is actually trying to demonstrate the fact that one time pad is unbreakable, meaning. Um, as long as you have your your keys um, of the same length as the message space, let me write it here to be more precise and clear about this. So, if your message space has the same size as the cipher size, as the same sp um, size as this, and um, the keys are never reused, keys are random. Keys are random, truly random, right? Keys are never reused, never reused. Why is that? Well, if, let's assume keys are reused. So what will happen now? You have plain text, you XR it with, say, a key to get the cipher text, right? And you have another plain text. Let's call it M first here, okay? To get the cipher text C. So suppose we do M2 also with the same key, we will get some other cipher text, right? What well, now comes the interesting problem. If we XOR C with C2, we will get M, XOR K, XOR M2, XOR K, which means based on the property of X, properties of XOR, the K and the K will cancel out. We have this interesting property. XR of two ciphertext uses the XR of two plain text messages. And if you happen to know one part of the plain text, you can find out the other part immediately. Or if there are some, some structures in your language uh, of the message space, for example, English has lots of structure, um, you could be able to infer M and M2 from C and the C2's XR. Okay, so it is possible to infer M and M2 in, in general. All right. Um, so you should not reuse the key. And one more thing I must also say here is that whenever you encrypt using one time pad, the message length must be equal to the key length. Okay. And um, that's basically how the XR works anyways. Um, you need to have a corresponding bit for each bit. Okay, key should not be reused. Message length has to be the same as the key length. The keys are never reused then XOR is unbreakable, okay? XOR is unbreakable. XOR based, uh, to be more general, um, one time pad is unbreakable, okay? Um, but you have to be careful with the uh, integrity part. Um, if, if the attacker can flip the bits of your communication channel, then of course it's, it's uh, problematic. So there's no integrity, uh, no integrity. 
okay just just only confidentiality confidentiality okay that's all um however uh, in practice uh, we don't really use one time paired in modern days um just because of this particular limitation that the message length has to be the same as the key length um the keys have to be very very long if you have a, a few gigabytes of messages to be encrypted the key length has to be gigabytes that's that's not really feasible uh, however this this construction is actually used in many many block cipher modes uh, that you internally use a one time pad idea for example i talked about counter mode uh, and um, a, a dcm mode they are all based on this idea of one time pad in some form okay so that's all i want to show you thank you very much